everyone. Welcome to Kirby Connect chronologically. Ooh. Hey, our goal Ooh. this year. Hey, how about that, huh? I like that. Well, that's Kirby nice. Connects chronologically. Ooh. Our goal this year is to help you read through the Bible chronologically. And when we do, we want you to look at it as one big story, the story of God's redemption. And so again, we're not going to get bogged down in a lot of things um, that you might have a question about. If you do, send them to Clayton, Emery, or Don. And they'll they'll answer that. They'll but, let you forward it to the exactly. mic. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, it is about the grand theme and the grand story of redemption and everything pointing towards Jesus. And that's kind of what we're looking for mm. is those those uh, in the Old Testament they're called theophanies, just kind of a mm. pre-exist or pre pre an Old Testament appearance of Christ before his incarnation. Uh, which kind of dots the pages of the Old Testament that show us what he's going to be like in the New Testament. So before we get started today, I thought we'd ask a question. Uh, guys, I just want to know, when's the last time any one of you got pulled over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I love about you know today? What, then, it's is, not me. It's not him. <laughs> I know I'm not most recent. <laughs> what the <laughs> love in this? <laughs> I feel like you know, there's a lot of sitting in this room. You know, and then you this, go on vacation, the whole one. staff falls apart. There's a verse that says, confess your faults to one another, and then you think it's going to just stay right there. But, Feel free to confess. But I've confessed right it there. already, and my pastor just beep, 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 <laughs> back the bus up over me been, so I can share it with everyone. I've been reading about Job's friends. Yes. So yes. Yes. Right. He's modeling. Yes. This great encouragement. Yes. Like so Job. here it is. Yeah. I'm driving down Sibley Road, and uh, I'm listening to the part of, of totally this. He's totally about to spiritualize this and blame this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, no, yeah. no. This is going to turn this into is, a virtue. This, this is, is what happened. It's going to be like Job's no. buddies and blame no. God. No. <laughs> going to blame God for what this happened. This is what happened. This is a factual telling of the events. <laughs> we'll narrate the events. as well. <laughs> I was listening to the part of scripture not on paying, my audio oh, Bible. Not paying attention to whenever traffic Whenever the Lord parts the Red Sea, bam, I was getting pumped up. I'm just going, oh, this What was power. getting pumped up was the gas pedal. The gas pedal was <laughs> going. <laughs> the brake was not. The no gas, was, no the gas no pedal was going closer the to the floor and exceeded the maximum miles per hour that were allotted to me on Sibley Road. <laughs> yes. By and a, a good, yeah, and a good, Bible, good yeah. officer of <laughs> a good officer of our Huron police force made sure that I enforced it, and brought me to the edge of the road for some conversation. Some conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk. Yeah. Oh yes. So, <laughs> so there we let's are. get into a joke. <laughs> You know, that's called deflection. We're all, fall we're all <laughs> right falling. We're all one. falling. <laughs> and we're going to see in Job that the Lord is sovereign and mighty above yeah. us all. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> and he did not get a ticket. And uh, and he is he is thankful for that. So let's do the look at Job. So Job, we're not going to go back. They did a great job last week talking about his uh, conversations and, and basically, they make the same mistake that we all make the mistake. We don't, when bad things happen to good people, we want to know the reason why or the source of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their conclusion was, if, you, if, you, if bad things happen to you, the answer is, because you sinned and God punished you with it. So it's only God's fault. And that was not the case no, no, no. at all. And so then Job has 10 speeches or replies to the 10 speeches of his friends or responses of theirs. And so you get to chapter 38 and all of a sudden the whole attitude and altitude and everything changes mm -hmm. in this moment because mm -hmm. now God speaks up. Whew. And uh, Job's replies become much shorter. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll point that wow. out. Wow. So in chapter 38, he starts off, and I love the way it starts off, then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Now, by the way, I don't think that, I mean, you can picture the whirlwind any way you want. I just think his voice 
was so thunderous. It's mm-hmm. Oz times 50,000. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it was just <laughs> James Earl Jones, you know, that, that kind oh. of thing. But he says, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words? And he goes on Whew. for 50, 50 or more questions, depending on how you would break down each text. And there was no punctuation in the original Hebrew, so we don't know for sure. But... I think there's 50 plus questions there. Do you guys have a favorite question that God asked Job in two chapters? I do. In verse 19 of chapter 38, when he says, Where does light come from Mm -hmm. and where does darkness go? Can you take each to its home? Do you know how to get there? (laughs) I'm just going, okay, I've never been to the home of light and darkness, you know? I like his response right after that. He says, but of course you know all this. Yeah. <laughs> See, you God used sarcasm. Yep. Yes. Oh. yes. What a great God. And this all comes off of that, that verse 3 when he says, brace yourself like a man that we, that pastor that we had talked about. Uh, just Whew. the Lord starting that whole discourse off with that verse 3. Whew. Yeah. And, and that's God language for this is going to be a come to Jesus. Mm, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and by the time it was over, he had recentered and... <laughs> yes, yes. Back on, back on the God of this universe, Clayton. You got a question that was kind of stuck out for you, or Emery, either one. Yeah, what I like. It reminded me. I mentioned this in a podcast last year. It reminded me of the Chris Tomlin song, "Indescribable." Who was mm-hmm. told every lightning bolt where it should go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a. It's not only is it just like drop dead. Oh, you are God, and everybody else is not. It's so crazy poetic in the middle of it. Yeah. It's just yeah. such high. Form. Yeah, just high praise for taking. God. Yes. Yeah. You know, one the one I I alluded to a little earlier before we started taping was verse thirty three. Do you know the laws of the universe? <laughs> Do you even have any idea about quantum physics, Joe? Do you understand gravity? Do you understand friction? The second law of thermodynamics. The third law of thermodynamics. Do you understand about uh, polar ice caps? Have you even seen the polar ice caps? I mean, just the. Do you know the world? Yeah. The Earth sits on a twenty three degrees tilt you know and is, is that right 23 degrees that's what sticks sure. in my mind that we'll sounds, sounds <laughs> we'll the argument here and, <laughs> yeah. it's just a little off center a little off center <laughs> that's right. down. You know, can you use them to regulate the earth i mean it's uh, it's just stuff that mm-hmm. we're still you know discovering discovering well, yeah, yeah. i think if god were to talk to us in this way today he would say things that we have no clue of like yeah. we know what quantum physics are but they don't well, he knows of things that we have no Absolutely. clue. Oh, yeah. what and that worlds is. that we've not discovered. Yeah. And he's talking about the universe. He said, "Do you know the laws of the universe?" Is what he says. So it's yeah. like, yeah. it's like what, where your little, where your little, right. uh, and that Hubble, Hubble telescope has reached. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's no, not. That's, not, that's not, nothing. The that's, other, the other thing I thought about is, do you know, you know, the laws of your universe? Because mm-hmm. he's talking about the realm that he lives in, exactly, Job. Yeah. But there's this whole other mm-hmm. realm or realms. Shh. That God is over yeah. that yes. we know yes. nothing yes. about, yeah. and yeah. Uh, you know, I had not seen, ears not heard. Yeah. New Testament says neither has God put it in the heart of man the things He's prepared for those that love Him. So let's let's go keep talking about what what God says to Job, and let's let's go to uh, maybe the short answer of Job in chapter 40. Uh, you know, um, I love chapter 40 and verse 1. Do you still want to argue with the Almighty? Are you God's critic? Do you have any answers? Job says, no. I'm nothing. How could I ever find the answers? I'll cover about it. And, and I, I don't think he... I, I think this is where his honest assessment starts to set in. And he allowed... We were talking about this earlier, but he allowed his friends to push him off center in his relationship with God. Yeah. And you know. in, in this reply and his, his later reply, both are a great example of, of what it should look like to come to God when we are in areas of confusion or areas of trouble or areas of not knowing mm, what's going on. Good. We see, like we've talked about, his friends and, and even himself trying to figure it out, like you made that point. But finally here, he comes humbly. Um, yeah. And he says, I am nothing. Yeah. There's no way I can figure this out. There's no way I can mm-hmm. comprehend this. And, and what an example even for us today, because uh, I'm guilty of this, trying to figure it out on my own, trying to come up with the right mm-hmm. answer on my own. 
when really my first step should be, man, I, I'm nothing. You have all the answers. Let me come to you. Let me lean mm -hmm. into you. And yeah. I, I like that those first three words, I am nothing, it, it's at the level of being. It's yeah. like as a being, I am nothing and you are everything. It's not just that I, I don't know anything mm -hmm. or I don't bring anything. Like as, as a being, I am nothing compared to you, in relation to you. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, I think is, and it's just my warped mind sometimes when I think, when I read scripture, are you as strong as God? Can you, can you thunder with a voice like this? I wonder if he put the whole universe on ultra Dolby surround sound. <laughs> and that moment, you know, everybody <laughs> went, it's an object lesson. what was that? You know, mm -hmm. and... Uh, I love that next verse when he says, put on your glory and splendor your honor and majesty. And he's like, yeah. let me see it. And you know, like like the majestic, glorious, all-powerful God yeah. says to Joel, yeah, think put yours on. <laughs> he, like even physically, he's a wreck right there. He has everything but splendor yeah. at that point. Exactly. <laughs> and again, Job is, and uh, Job is descriptive, not prescriptive. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so yes. by that, what I'm saying is, we're not looking at every word to try to find some. We're just looking here to see that God doesn't bail out on us on mm -hmm, bad days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God wants to test our faith, and that's okay. He wants us to grow in our faith, and that's good. And he wants to challenge our faith, which I think is is wonderful. And and you only go get through that by times of trials and testings, yeah. you know? And well, I uh, think he sees Job, after this conversation, sees God more clearly. Oh, yes. And that's part of that's part of it. That God's intention is for you to know him more and to see him more. Because after this, he, he says, you know, previous to now, I had I'd known of God, but now I've seen God. He has a better picture of God on the other side of this. God is always about restoration. If God wanted to just destroy Job, he wouldn't have this lengthy conversation. Yeah. He just said... Gone. I think it's interesting too. We don't think of God in this way a lot of times. I don't think, but a conversation with God can be discipline. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times we think of it as uh, we think of God's love a lot, which mm -hmm. we should. And we think about what can I learn from God. But this was definitely comforted. yeah mm -hmm. comfort all this. But this is definitely a point of discipline. And to Job's yes. credit, again, I mean, in a world today where discipline is so rejected, mm -hmm. and if yeah. anybody oh, has yeah. anything that's yeah. uncomfy to say about us, we are going to rebel against it. Yeah. He is yeah. so quick to realize, yep, to receive it. I, I'm yeah. in the wrong. I need yeah. to receive this. It. Absolutely. I love, I've already said too much. He even realized I don't need to say anymore. <laughs> yeah. right. Cover his mouth. I just yeah. need to yeah. listen. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 I just need mouth. to listen and receive this, yes. and then there yeah. you go. So Joe gets restored. Before we talk about that and wrap it up, just a quick yes or no. Did Job's hear? Did Job's friends from chapter 37? hear God speak in chapter 38? Good question. It's not specific, but I, I kind of think I they think do, so. since in the conclusion he, he talks about a little, talks about them a little bit, and he says um, that he, he spoke to them and said, Job's going to pray for you. Mm -hmm. But, the, but so it says mind, in verse 7, after the Lord had finished speaking to Job, yeah. So that uh, so you're thinking maybe they overheard it, but I think they were there. And when he started with, you need to get ready, and then uh, brace yourself, yourself like a man. man. They went, they went, yeah. they back, <laughs> they back, they backed up. But they were, they were still there. They Clear went, oh, 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 oh. They Probably all, all along with with God speaking, they're going, oh boy, if this is what he's saying to Job, and we were off this much. <laughs> But, but maybe they weren't there. Because mm. you I, could, I don't know. who knows? Because you could make the case. So after the Lord finished uh, speaking to Job, he said to Eliphaz the Temanite, mm -hmm. you know, did he look over to him and yeah. he was there, or was he? Your turn. We don't know. Yeah, right. 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 but right. if I were him, I would have been like a hundred yards. Hey, <laughs> 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 going. I don't even know what you got to say yeah. about me if you're saying that. Right. You're saying about Job. Who was... yeah. I would have said Job. No, I don't know that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know. I don't know that guy. Then uh, verse chapter 42 said, Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do anything and no one can stop you. You ask, who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorance? It is I. And I was talking about things I knew nothing about. Things far too wonderfully for me. And, and he's saying this still greedy. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. he's, he's saying this still sick. Yeah. 
I'm still saying this as a broken, impoverished man. And you said, listen, and I will speak, and I have some questions for you, and you must answer them. And I had only heard about you before. Um, I like the way the King James says, what my ears have heard, my eyes now see. Yeah, that's and nice. I take mm-hmm. back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord finishes speaking. He said, I'm angry with you and your two friends. Um, I don't know what happened to the other two. Um, maybe took the Emory route. <laughs> <laughs> Gone a dust cloud. I took, yeah. took the first camel out of town. I, I don't know. know. But anyway, he worships, and then God blesses and blesses him with more children, mm-hmm. blesses him with I know, double the wealth, double the cattle, double the land, double the camel, and, um, and blesses his family. Uh, and all the land, um, no women were as lovely as the daughters of Job, <laughs> and their father put them in his will along with their brothers, and he lived 140 years after this living to see four generations of his children and his grandchildren. Then he died, and the old man had lived long and full. The Old Testament has this reoccurring phrase, to the third and fourth generation, that we're to leave a heritage to the third and fourth generation. When uh, Last year when we were going through Proverbs, um, Clayton talked about that for a little bit. And so... Uh, I think because this was one of the first books written, this is the first place that comes to mention in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That our example is to leave a godly heritage to the third and fourth generation. That is your children, your grandchildren, that's your second, your great-grandchildren, and your Mm great-great-grandchildren. You know, we won't live, I won't live long enough to see my Mm great-great-grandchildren, but I should live long enough to leave a heritage for those children. That's and good. My grandchildren. That's good. I love, Pastor, where you've got us in this whole, just for 2023, this idea of being centered in a man that was morally upright and righteous as Job was, who he was amazing in his response to God. Even once the Lord's revelation was revealed to him and who God is, it caused him, as morally upright as he was, to come to centering. So that means every one of us, yeah. every person, every one of us have to yearn for that, long for that, to be centered after we hear and read and see the revelation of the Lord and who He is. That, that should be a, our response mm-hmm. over Absolutely. and over and over. Absolutely. And I think one final little button we'll put on it, then we're going to go to the book mm-hmm. of Exodus, uh, is that it, having questions is not wrong. Yes. Going mm-hmm. to the wrong people with right questions is wrong. That's a great point. And it's going to yes. get you wow. in trouble. If you go to the wrong, the wrong people, people with the yeah. right, right questions, questions wow. you're going to get a wrong answer. Tweet See, that. They already had their mind made up. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. That's and really so, good. So, great way to qu- it. Questions not wrong, but make sure you go to the right people who give you the right answers. Wow. Let's go to Exodus. Now, everybody, the first 12 chapters are easy. It's the story mm-hmm. of Moses. We know the story of Moses. Let's look at just the broad picture and talk about Exodus and Moses as we wrap up today, all right? Exodus gives us an overview of of the growth of Jacob's family, his 12 sons, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we find them in in Egypt, and because they become so many, uh, they became fearful, and they they put them in slavery in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. And then then you... Find out about this place called Canaan, which is also called the Promised Land. And that's the goal. That's where they were Mm -hmm. wanting to get to. They were called to leave one place and go to another. And key figures in this story are Pharaoh. uh, And uh, and there's there's, there's two... The Pharaoh that we last read about in Genesis is not the same Pharaoh no. in the book of Exodus, okay? Time it, has marched on. And it's weird, so that, yeah, because it makes this transition that the that, that Pharaoh died, and then another Pharaoh comes, and I have to admit I don't understand this, because it, it says uh, eventually a new king came to power in Egypt who knew nothing about mm-hmm. you, Joseph mm-hmm. or what he had done. That's that's odd to me, as much mm-hmm. as the Egyptians are very much right. into hieroglyphics and writing history and stuff like this. This is a guy who 
honestly, God used him to save the save nation of Egypt. Right. They would not have existed had it mm-hmm. not been for God putting Joseph in that place. But do you think it means you don't even remember what, who it was? But knew not. I think you remember it. It means. What I was reading, it said there's a 300 year gap between when Joseph right. died mm-hmm. to where we're what we're reading about yeah. here. Mm-hmm. But still, in 300 years, you would think you would remember the the guy who yeah. God but used to save. Not, I think if all the agriculture, all the food, yeah. all like the, we we remember the American Revolution. We remember the founding of our nation yeah. 200 and something years ago. The little retelling of history starts to happen even yeah. with them, maybe 300 years. But you make know. a good point. There's probably many pharaohs between. That pharaoh and this pharaoh, you're talking 300 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So a bunch of pharaohs. Mm-hmm. It just takes a little bit of change each time, each yeah. time, each time for. Yeah, great point. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. So as we read through the book of Exodus, um, there's some themes that we need to watch out for. Okay. And I'm going to throw them out and then you guys just, you know, it just like rapid fire stuff. Um, first of all, is God's redemption. How do we see God's redemption in the book of Exodus? Mm, Passover. Yeah, Passover a lot. Passover, man. Remember the death angels coming through and they take the, mm-hmm. the, the blood and apply it to mm-hmm. the posts. And he, the firstborn of every Egyptian dies, but, but God passes over yeah. the Israelites. Yeah. And that became an annual holiday. Mm-hmm. Yep. Beginning uh, of the year, they reordered the calendar around that. Yep. It became the first month of the year. Mm-hmm. And then another big theme is guidance. Mm -hmm. All right? How did God guide them in the book of Exodus? Pillar of of fire, cloud by day, pillar of fire fire. by night. Yeah. The the fire and and that. And then also with the Ten Commandments, and then that Mm -hmm. certainly provided God's word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the presence of God and the Mm -hmm. word of God, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people want this experiential presence of God without the Word. Without the Word of mm-hmm. God, yeah. mm-hmm. and you, if your experiential, if your experience with the presence of God isn't anchored in the Word of God, you have understood the wrong experience. It's it's easy to get drawn into the wrong experience. It's easy mm-hmm. to mistake emotions for the presence of God mm-hmm. if you don't know oh, yeah. who God is as Absolutely. defined in Scripture. Yeah, well, and even look at Moses and Aaron. It wasn't this. Wasn't this great fun experience for them? They were oh. they were acting in obedience, um, yeah, and and God used them in that for sure. Sure, yeah. And then there's the there's the theme of worship. You know, they have the feast days, and what they are to bring, and um, and the sacrificial system uh, for praise and forgiveness, uh, to remember God's goodness and faithfulness. Um, and then holiness is a big theme, all right? And you'll read about a lot of laws. Um, there's ceremonial laws, civil laws. We talked about that a year ago. We'll touch on that a little later. But these main themes, you will start to see early on how God protected Moses and his mama, and, you know, in the bull rush, you know, and the, mm-hmm. put him down the River Nile, and the princess of Egypt sees the baby, you know, then sends for somebody to go get a Hebrew woman to nurse the baby, and it's... Who just so happens to be the, his birth mother. Yeah, yeah. It so happens to be his birth mother. <laughs> and so I love that God pay, and they pay her. Yeah, yeah, she gets paid. <laughs> they, they Probably pay the only mom, <laughs> only mom who got paid for being a mom, you know. And, uh, and so you see God's redemption, guidance, protection. You just see God's hand at work even when Moses... And Moses' mama, his Moses' sister Miriam, had no idea what would happen, yeah. you know, 40 years later, and then 80 years later, and then 120 years later, you know. And you can break up the life of Moses, yeah, you know. I heard, I heard an old preacher say one time, he said, you can divide the life of Moses up in three, three seconds. First 40 years, he thought he was somebody. The second 40 years, he's on the backside of the desert realizing he was a nobody. And then he spent the last 40 years of his life realizing what God can do, uh, that God can make a somebody out of a nobody. Mm-hmm. And, like uh, and so yeah. I, I thought that was good. Mm-hmm. So the book of Exodus is an easy read until you get to lo- along somewhere about chapter 26, right? And, uh, and we'll talk about the Ten Commandments next week. Anybody want to wrap it up with a great quote, a great thought? 
I love Exodus 12, verse 42. It says, On this night the Lord kept his promise to bring his people out of the land of Egypt. So again, just that, that idea of faithfulness that we see. Again, there's that 300-year gap between Joseph and here, but yet we still see God continue to be faithful over and over and over. Right. The names change, the stories change, God's faithfulness did not yep. change. Good stuff. All right, keep reading in your uh, chronological Bibles. If you have any questions, email them to Donald, Emery, or Clayton. They'll be glad to get back up with you. God bless you. We'll see you in church on Sunday.